Greetings, YouTube. You are staring at the first path that I usually always take in my alliance in map five, days one through five. We are a five times five map five alliance, which I am talking about today because, interestingly enough, now that Kabam has done such a great job this week of lowering uh, map cost, including map five, I am receiving questions more than ever from summoners who, for the first time, their alliance is going to take on map five. It may only be one day a week. It may eventually be like my alliance, five days a week. But regardless, it can be a little intimidating, especially if you've only done maps three and maps four, to think about what it takes to do map five. So a couple of things off the top. First off, I'm only going to give my limited experience. I do map five every day of alliance quests, but even then, I still only do certain paths. And so there are going to be plenty of tips and tricks that I miss in this video, not only because of my lack of knowledge in some paths, but just because we don't have enough time to get through everything. So your comments and your feedback, if you run map five at all on any path, and the more specific you can get in the comments, it's going to be crucial to follow up videos and just in general sending more people who are trying to pick the best champions to save units and revives and potions to help out the community we are all in this together and that is why your feedback is just as important if not even more important than mine so thank you for clicking on this video and being a part of helping your fellow summoners succeed in map five now that's going to be basically what this video is i haven't run map four like in three years and I haven't run map 6 since the new update, and I certainly have no interest in running map 7 ever. I think it is the biggest cash grab of all time. But with that being said, if you're in one of those top alliances where cash doesn't matter and you have uh, so much disposable income, you're basically just flushed in cash and you uh, are drowning in hundreds, then hey, I don't blame you. If, if revives and potions and units didn't matter, I'm sure I'd go for map 7 as well. And there are some amazing prizes at the top of that for sure, including some limited uh, first-time titles for the introduction of it, which is a separate news item altogether, which is not really worth covering in a video, in my opinion. So I just wanted to add that in quickly to this one. So as you can see, I am a map 5 believer. Now, map 5 is unique with a couple of uh, caveats. It's got a ton of Sentinels, and besides that, you're going to face some interesting mini-bosses like Nightcrawler and Morningstar and Green Goblin, and so it does help, and some of my advice to your alliance if you're watching this and you haven't run this before, whoever gets in the map first on day one, let the rest of the line app know who the mini is, because sometimes that can determine who you bring in. You want at least one of your three-year champs to be... Uh, able to counter those first two mini bosses and as you can see it's not just one morning star but eventually it is a second and a much more difficult morning star in tier two before you get to tier three so i like to bring in my og vision for a variety of reasons but one of which is that he is of course bleed immune and so that is how i'm able to help take down morning star when my alliance needs me to come through so yes a lot of this discussion is going to be based off of Sentinels. You will also notice my other two champions that I bring in, Star-Lord, Sig 200, 5-star, rank 4. I still love Star-Lord. I realize that he's kind of gotten back in the uh, background of the tech class now that we have champs like Ghost and Stark Spidey, but I still think Star-Lord is so much fun to play, and he is my Kingpin Slayer. I can't tell you how many times I've gone in and one-shotted a Kingpin boss for my alliance because I've built up that combo, spammed the special one, and just easily countered Kingpin. So I'm still so thankful that we have a Kingpin, and sometimes Kabam is not so nice. Who knows what the next alliance quest boss is going to be? Hopefully not something like a thing. So you've got to take it while you can and enjoy uh, countering a fairly easy champ to get down like Mr. Kingpin. So with that being said, I want to go to some Medusa-type counters for uh, Sentinel, because I've been told that the best option against Sentinel is Medusa. I wanted to name her first because personally I've never used my four-star Medusa against Sentinel. My five-star is unawakened and I have kind of flirted with the idea of awakening my five-star and taking her up to rank four, but I haven't done it yet because I only have one generic five-star awakening gem and so I'm being very picky about who I use it on, which is why I'm still hunting for Omega Red or maybe even waiting for someone like Aegon. But uh, hey, if you if you think I should, let me know. Uh, anyhow, let's uh, let's go to my champions, and this is going to be something that I've got a bunch of notes written down, so it might seem kind of scatterbrained, 
But there are a couple of underappreciated champs I want to make sure I talk about before the end of this video. And like I said at the top, uh, your feedback is going to be so important to who I've missed. I wanted to make sure I named Medusa at the very top of this because Lord knows it would be easy for me to miss her because I haven't used her. And yet she would be arguably the most important counter to, uh, to Sentinels out of everyone. So speaking of female counters for Sentinels, it is easy to talk about. How Proxima Midnight is fantastic for Mr. Corvus Glaive because she actually gives him a unique mission that uh, is, you know, a synergy bonus, if you will. But one of my favorite champions to use, especially with Proxima Midnight, is the female badass Nebula. And you shouldn't be shocked that I'm such a fan of Nebula because, speaking of shocked, even though Sentinels have, a, you know, a fairly easy specials to evade especially their special one special two can be a little tricky especially with that stupid lag that we're still getting in the problems connected to the network but in general uh nebula can be a fantastic counter with her shock damage it can be a pain though especially in a three minute timed fight to have to build up her shock charges which is why proxima midnight synergy is so incredible so when you go to your proxima midnight and you look at the unique synergies at play you will see for yourself, the Nebula Synergy, which starts the fight with 10 Electroshock Charges. So what I like to do when I'm bringing my Nebula into Alliance Quest Map 5 is I, I start with those 10 Shock Charges. And then I'll build up to a special 2, and then right before I release it, I'll parry to transfer those, at that time, like 13 to 14 Electroshock Charges on Sentinel. And then I'll do a special 2, and I'll double them before the uh, combo expires and that normally even on day four and day five now given my nebula is rank three as a five star but that normally knocks sentinel out every time and it's kind of just fun i was a big fan of one of the best video games of all time growing up uh, for those of you that are old enough to remember what nintendo 64 was the original goldeneye and so it sort of feels like i'm laying uh, landmines on sentinel and they are exploding all at once and maybe that's a weird analogy to some but for me it is fantastic I have also seen people besides Medusa have great effect in the Cosmic class with underappreciated champs like OG Thor, who can still get it done even as a four-star and after uh, the nerf. I've seen people do it with Ronin. Obviously, Hyperion uh, can help for certain usages, but Angela, and then one of my favorite champions of all time, it's Miss Marvel or Captain Marvel. Hits like a freaking tank. Just like Angela, I don't think we talk enough about them in the community. And then also, I just want to throw this out. If you have no one else, and you do have an Awakened Spear Iron Man, that arc overlo overload, just like OG Iron Man, can be appreciated. Now, when it comes to the science class, you know how I feel about Quake. Quake is still a champion that I have used very successfully in Alliance Quest, but right now I am saving her as I just 100% completed the uncollected difficulty this month, largely thanks to my Quake, especially against Mr. Sinister's final uncollected fight. Yes, Quake is a fantastic counter against Mr. Sinister. Highly recommend all you Quakers out there, user. But in terms of shock damage, I've seen people who have a positive effect with both Electro and Wasp, even though they both are uh, typically a little bit of a glass cannon when it comes to not having the most health. Now we're going to quickly jump to the skill class where Blade, of course, with the Ghost Rider synergy, getting the danger sense against Sentinels is fantastic. I have brought in my Blade plenty of times. I have also brought in my Awakened High Sig 4-star Black Widow with Quake, and Black Widow can be a great counter at the end, and I'll talk about this before I end the video, but at the end of map 5, quite a, quite a bit, on the left side of tier 3, you're going to face a really annoying Electro. And you're going to take a ton of Thorns-like damage no matter who you bring in. And so if you don't have a counter like Blade with Danger Sense or what Crossbones or Black Widow, uh, you're going to really take it in the face. And every once in a while, I'll see somebody like uh, a newly rated summoner go into act five and the message me and say prophet wish somebody had me, uh, warned me about that electro on the left side my alliance was counting on me and i just died i also want to point out that some people have told me and this is not me this is just them that electra can be a great counter as well in my limited knowledge of electra i, I realize her abilities can be 
positive, but I used to think she was a better champion than she was. Maybe she's a little more underappreciated in my book than she should be. But you know who's not underappreciated in this class? Mr. Hawkeye. If you need a champion for power control, consider Hawkeye. I, uh, I really think Hawkeye is as close to the top tier as it gets. He's like sixth man of the year for so many people in their rosters. Now, when it comes to mutants, certainly you've got champs like Domino that are always going to have uh, a high amount of utility, even somebody like an Iceman. X-23 can still cost crits against Sentinels, so that's positive. And uh, a lot of people I've also talked to have good things to say about Rogue. And when you have the, the lifesteal and the power control, speaking of that, uh, one of the lesser appreciated options is Psylocke. I, I would prefer, personally, Rogue over Psylocke, but you might disagree. And let's just make sure as I scroll down I'm not missing anyone really important uh, besides that. Magneto, maybe. And Storm, maybe. Uh, let me know if Magneto, Storm, Cable, or, uh, or any other mutant option is someone you use. At the very top, I just haven't seen it too much, but that doesn't mean they don't use it. So besides that, uh, we've covered the Cosmic. I want to talk about in tech real quick, Doc Ock, who self-admittedly is a champion that I don't have a lot of skill with. Doc Ock can be a fantastic Alliance quest option for Map 5. When you have him, Iron Man Infinity War, that power control, once again, very underrated. I just wish he hit harder. Stark Spidey, of course can be as well. Sometimes I'll have fun and I'll bring in the Holy Trinity just to see what happens. Uh, Ultron is another great option. Still got that double uh, immunity and the regen, especially if you're trying to take out somebody like a Morningstar. And I, I also want to mention, I talk about this a lot behind the scenes. I freaking love Yondu. Uh, one of my favorite champions, kind of like Hawkeye. If you've got somebody that you can spam the special one and have a fantastic uh, ability to win the fight, it's just a fun game. And Yondu, if they're bleed immune, you still cause a nice armor break. And I, I hate fighting him still on defense as much as I love fighting with him on offense. So Yondu is uh, is just really fantastic to, to fight with. And then on top of that, let's talk a little bit about the best class still overall, the Mystic class. Now, I am in the process of maybe taking up my Symbiote Supreme to rank four, but I haven't really used him yet in Alliance Quest, so I'd love to hear some people's thoughts. I also have stopped using Dr. Voodoo because of the lack of poison uh, damage with Sentinels, but maybe some people still like his power control. One of the champions that I have used a little bit is this chick right here, Miss Morningstar. So underappreciated. I did a whole video thanks to a summoner reaching out to me to talk about the uh, ability of Morningstar to fight nodes like masochism. And so if you have Morningstar, one of the more common six stars I've seen floating around the community, consider using Morningstar. And then talk about a common six star or underappreciated champion. How about Miss Thor Jane Foster? Spam that special one. Get the shock damage on. Use the stun. If the RNG works to your favor, you'll have almost an unlimited stun. And have some fun. Thor Jane Foster is another fantastic option. Now, I know uh, also I, I mentioned Dormammu, another power control MVP. Uh, there are several champions, including, of course, Magic, that I'm using currently in my own Alliance Quest bid at the very moment of recording this that uh, I'm taking on for Map 5. So if you haven't done Map 5 yet or you're kind of new to this, once you get to, and I, I want to point out real quick because people always ask what paths I take, I take the far left on Tier 1 and Tier 2, and then on Tier 2, I face these really annoying nodes, the Burden of Might and also Power Reserve. So this is the kind of node that if you don't bring in a Power Control champ, it's going to be very, very difficult for you to not get wrecked. So I bring in my OG Vision, who now is like at SIG 180 as a 5-star, and I, of course, start off the fight with a decent amount of power, and then every once in a while, I'll kind of stall till the Synthesis comes back, but otherwise, it's just Power Control, Power Control, Power Control, and I don't dexterity back because when I do and that registers I lose power once I gain a hit so you really want to practice it's almost like fighting juggernaut in act four and that was still a hard fight even before uh, the buff where you couldn't parry juggernaut but regardless you want to bring in a power control champ that can easily control the power of uh, your enemies on day four and day five you make one mess up and you're dead speaking of mess ups you can also see electro is all over this map. 
Now, most uh, admittingly, for me, it's on the left side of this, but then, and this isn't the case right now, but normally, where you see this rocket raccoon, on day five, when you have like a 19, 20,000 rated electro, if you don't have any alliance members that have brought in, say, that blade with Ghost Rider Synergy to counter, you're going to be losing a lot of champs just from the thorns like damage. So really anticipate electro counters. If you have one, but they're not ranked up, consider putting the resources into them to take electro down. Now, I got through everything in front of me on my notepad, but I realized that was only about 30 to maybe 35% of the information I could have said in this video. I just didn't want to take a crazy amount of time because your time is, is very important to me. So this is where your comments come back. Your feedback uh, comes into play. If you have certain counters for this guy, you know, if you think that uh, there are certain paths that you're taking that you know I don't take that you can help people with, say, hey, I take path two, tier two. These are the champs I've used over the time. These are the best counters. I want this to be like a forum of help for map five as so many summoners, especially the middle class, like to call them of MCOC, start to prepare to do map five for the first time. I think it's a great opportunity to pretty quickly grow your roster, especially if you're in need of more tier four class catalyst crystals and more uh, tier four class catalyst opportunities as certainly the drop rates in the map five. And then if you do map five, five days a week, you'll even get some map six crystals, hopefully at the end of those milestone rewards as well. So everything gets better. When I started doing map five, five days a week, the progression in my uh, own progression of my uh, account and my alliances was tenfold. So I, I don't think that can be understated enough or overstated enough to know the importance of challenging yourself with a map five alliance if you haven't done it before so good luck i hope this was helpful to you and as always thank you in advance for the comments and the feedback that you put on this video the more people that can help each other out the better this community is and that certainly is why i have an mcoc youtube channel myself